You're going to hinge at the hips, bringing the weight back on your heels. And I normally just take the bar and keep it very close to my legs. So I'm hinging back, using my legs as a guide. And then squeeze those glutes and back up to the standing position. From the side, looks like this. curling the dumbbell up with the palms facing toward each other, toward you. So it looks like this. You want to make sure your shoulders are back, standing up straight. You want to keep the, your arms close to your body. So you don't want to look like this. Make sure keep your elbows down. This next exercise is an alternating plank row step up. Grab your set of dumbbells. I'm using a step here. You can use you can use anything as long as it doesn't slide. And this step is only I'd say probably three inches off the ground. So you're going to start with the weights. And also, it can't be that wide. You want the weights to be about shoulder width apart, so the object can only be um, that wide. So, um, get in the plank position. And I like to use a very wide stance. And what you want to do is you want to try not to turn your body while doing this. So it's going to be working the core and your back at the same time. So we're going to step up with the dumbbell, row, back down. Step up with the opposite arm, row. And you're just alternating. At the same time, trying to maintain your body centered, not twisting and turning. Going to really engage, engage your core. If that's too difficult, you can do it without a step. Get down in the plank position. You're going to step, row, step, row. To make it even less challenging, just do away with stepping with the dumbbell. So you're just going to do the normal plank row. I apologize, but I forgot to go over this exercise. So I'm doing a voiceover. This is a seated close grip band row. At the bottom of the movement, you want there to be tension. You don't want there to be slack. At the top of the movement, the handle should come between your chest and your belly button. You want to keep your arms to your side, and then when you're bringing the band toward you, squeeze with your shoulder blades and make sure your back stays straight. In this circuit, in between each exercise, there is an active rest. I'm just using a walker. If you have them on hand, it's a very, very cheap piece of equipment. You can use it for a lot of things. You can use a bar as well. To make it harder, bring your feet straight out. And as you go up, use squeeze your shoulder blades together. So it looks like this. Make sure you control the movement. Make sure it's not sloppy. So you, do, you want your body in a straight line. You don't want it to be like this. And just throwing your weight up. That's counterproductive. So make sure your body is in a straight line. Easier version. Bring your feet in.
Same thing, make sure your body is in a straight line. Okay, for the finishing exercise challenge, after the circuit, we'll be doing a Superman. We're going to be doing 25 reps for four rounds, so you're doing a total of 100. You want to really make sure you control this movement. And what you're going to be doing is bringing, right back here, you're going to be bringing your arms up, so your upper body up, like you're flying in the air. And then you're also bringing your lower body up as well at the same time. So it looks like this. I like to pause for just a second to really squeeze, squeeze the glutes and by holding that you get a lot more out of it instead of just so really control the movement once again. If, if that's too difficult, just move your upper body. Leave your lower body on the floor, and that will look like this. Once again, you want to pause at the top of the movement. 